This video was made possible by you. If you want to save time and support what I do, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for what we're creating in this video, as well as other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. Welcome back to the web design series. And here's a problem, right? Let's say you got a CTA in your header, which you probably do since that's very common. And you really, really want to make people click the button, right? The reach out to us button. How do you do that? One of the ways you could potentially do that is make it somehow visually prominent. We did that already with our main button being the only one on a black background. But if you want to take this one step further, you could include animations. I'm thinking that we could add some sort of a, like a flare or light to that button to make it stand out more. Let me just click through to this header menu and duplicate this, just this very instance. And let me launch the prototype as well, just so that we can take a look at the final outcome, hide UI. And let me just take this over here because we're gonna then keep the final component here. And here's what we need to do. We somehow, or first of all, let me share the idea with you. Imagine that there is like a, some kind of a light, right? There is some kind of a light. Let me just turn this into a frame like this. Let's say you, you're looking at the button, nothing happens. And then all of a sudden a flare flies over the button like that, right? I think that is pretty, that would definitely catch my attention. So I think we could try and implement this in here. So as you can see, one of the ways we probably have to do that is have some sort of a container over the button. So let's, let me just start from the very beginning. I will take this button, right, that we have. It's an instance of a component, so nothing new there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to, with this selected, I'm going to press Shift A, which is going to add an auto layout on top of our existing button. And I'm going to rename this auto layout to CTA with a flare. Okay. And I'm going to disable paddings both vertically and horizontally. And with the menu item, I'm actually going to, with the button, I'm going to actually make it hug contents and then the CTA with the flare I'm going to make it hug contents as well we want to make sure that the overall width of this component is based on what's inside which is the CTA the actual CTA and now here's the thing that I'm going to do I am going to create a frame that is the same height as the button right so that's going to be 49 I'm going to make it gray just so that we can see or like blacks just so that we can see what's happening. I'm going to do command X, select this new auto layout and do command V. And this one is going to be ignoring the auto layout. So I'm just going to click this button and then I'm going to center this pressing option H and option V. And what I'm going to do next is go to position and constraints here and do left and right and then top and bottom. This ensures that whenever we make a change to the text, let's say make it really long, this frame 25 is going to stretch out all the way and it's going to keep whatever distance is here because it's now left and right, top and bottom, right? So if we're going to have a, I don't know what, what this could be like 67, pixel distance on both sides it's gonna keep the distance on both sides so let me shorten this back cta and you can see that it keeps the distance again regardless of what we put in the text right so that's exactly what we need let me revert back to reach out to us all right and i'm gonna actually rename this frame to flare container okay 
and I am going to make it actually wider, substantially wider. I think I'm going to make it like, I think I'm going to make the distance to the edges over 100 pixels, maybe 150, right? Something like that. Doesn't matter, just approximately this distance. And now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to create our flare. I'm going to use the rectangle tool by pressing R, click and drag, press enter, click and drag again like this to select these top two vertices and move it to the right and rename this layer to command R, flare. Then I'm going to choose one of our colors from the design system, blue in this case. However, I am going to make a gradient out of this. I'm going to detach the style and go click on this blue color and then go to gradient and linear. I'm going to position it here and here. So it goes perpendicular to this. And what I'm going to do next is add a point in the gradient and this is going to be the initial design system color or actually no this is going to be white and this is going to be the color from our design system so you're going to get this type of situation going on right this type of flare yeah i think this could look cool i think i'm just going to duplicate this point just so that we get this beautiful gradient right it looks a bit like a laser it's exactly our goal and I think I'm going to reduce the opacity of the color on the very left and very right to zero just to get this going on and then I'm going to do command X select the flare container and command V this is going to put a flare into our flare container and I'm going to do option V and then we basically got our flare right I'm just going to probably make it bigger like this, right? This is probably what I want to go for. Okay, this is pretty good. And I am going to then do this. I'm going to select this CTA with a flare, this whole thing we have created and turn it into a component, all right? And then what I'm going to do is do another variant and I'm going to make sure this is actually wide so you can see everything. I'm going to move it to the middle, even bigger, even bigger like this. And then I am going to take this flare and move it from here to here. Or better yet, I'm going to select the flare container shift a and actually again decrease the height and decrease and increase the width but i'm gonna still keep it left and right and then top and bottom and i am going to make sure this flare is left aligned and center aligned but for this we're probably gonna need this flare to be somehow smaller. So what I'm going to do is with this flare selected, I'm going to press enter, add a point here, then here and here and here and here. And then on the other side as well, here, here and here, 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 and that's it. And as you can see, these lines are going to be created automatically in the middle of the other two other two vertices and with that finished i'm gonna just click and drag and then do shift backspace okay and then enter and what i'm gonna do next is press enter again select the bottom two shift backspace enter so we successfully shortened this flare so that it now within the auto layout it now automatically stays out of the button and now i'm actually going to remove this variant and i'm going to create it again with this new setup and i am going to then simply just select the flare container and change the auto layout 
alignment, right? It will now align. And now a few adjustments. I'm going to go with this component selected, go to property, and then I'm going to say state. And we're going to do zero or like before and after. And the flare on the button is going to happen in between. And what I'm going to do to make this happen is select this button, go to prototype. And I am going to, you can see that, that we already have the, the interaction on the button, but I'm going to do add an interaction on the overall thing. Go to add interactions and the trigger is going to be after delay. The delay is going to be probably like 4000 milliseconds. And the action is going to be changed to state after. Okay, so after delay, animation, change to actions, change to state after. Animation is going to be smart animate. And we're going to go for ease out. And we're going to go for 300 milliseconds. And then with the second state selected, I'm going to add an interaction. And I'm going to do after delay one millisecond action change to state before. Okay, so we got a loop. And now let's test this out. First, before I do that, though, I am going to just do a couple of things. I'm going to click on the before and click and drag with option selected, and then try and change the text within this button to make it super long. And then I'm going to just change the state to before, from before to after. And you can see that automatically when we change states, the light is going to fly all the way across the button, regardless of how long the button actually is. All right. So one final thing I'm going to do is actually just disable the background on the flare container in both variants. And then I'm going to click on this CT, this variant and do clip content and clip content. And now the moment of truth, I'm going to select the first variant option, click and drag. And then I'm just going to take this command X. I'm going to just paste it somewhere on our homepage. So let's say I'm going to paste it here. Okay. Or let's say I'm going to paste it here, here, like that. That's pretty nice. All right. Now let's launch the prototype and see what happens. All right. And this is the final outcome. Watch what happens. The flare flies over it, but it's kind of fast. So I think we could make it slower. First of all, let's make it slower. Let me go to prototype. And after delay, let's change it to 800 milliseconds. And I think we could actually reduce the opacity of the flare to, to what? Let's see. Flare container, center. So this is way too prominent. So I think we could go for, what about these blend modes? Would any of these blend modes work? Oh, this looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Difference. Doesn't that look cool? Should we try this? Let's try difference. Okay, I'm happy about this so far. And let's try difference here as well. Of course. And then we need to switch this over back to left aligned. Let's try this now. Reset. Okay, I really, really like this. All right. I like this a lot. So I think we, what we could do is two small tweaks. I'm going to change the rounding of this overall variant to whatever the rounding is on the button. So let's do eight, right? Eight here as well. Clip on both clip content. And still with the flare, I think we should do 55 in terms of opacity. Let's reset the prototype. Actually, no, no, we're not going to do the, we're not going to do the 
opacity. I think we're going to keep it 100, as they say. And I'm thinking that actually this timing is too generous. I think we should go for 550, let's say, right? 550. And now that we know that this actually works, let me take this command X and just replace this button in the header menu. Command Shift R. Okay, CTA with a flare. Now let's relaunch the prototype actually. Let's relaunch the prototype and let's see what that looks like. All right, so I'm loading my prototype and there we go, there we have the flare. Okay, so ideally this should be in a loop and at the same time, I think we, sh we could make this, we could make this scroll behavior, we could make this sticky stop at top edge so now that when we scroll we can see the header menu permanently now this looks cool but be careful because this can get annoying really quickly i think maybe we could do like a bigger pause to not annoy the users that much i think we could go for instead of the delay being instead of the delay being 4000 milliseconds we could do 6000 milliseconds or 7000 milliseconds which is seven seconds, which means you're gonna get seven seconds in between the animations. Hopefully that's still noticeable, but not that annoying. So we should get a flare. You view the site, you are interacting with it, and then you see the flare again, right about now, and you're like, oh, what's this? You keep scrolling maybe, maybe you notice it, maybe you don't. But eventually you probably notice this and then you click it and boom, you got the user where you want them to be. Yeah, this is definitely one of the ways how you can make a CTA more interesting. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think this is really engaging. There's plenty of color combinations you can try. You can make the color of the flare completely different. This is just one way to do things. So yeah, if you would like to buy the source file for this and also all of this, for the website check the link in the description thanks for tuning in guys today i hope you found this useful if you did please leave a like and i will see you in the next one